All right, let's get into our debate this evening. How should we see these statements? Does it mean that when separatists initially blamed the army and the police or other agencies of the Indian state for these killings, they were lying, they were too scared to speak the truth, or they just didn't know? Also, how should New Delhi respond to what seems to be a very, very significant admission made by not just one, but by now several key separatists in the Kashmir Valley? Let's get started with our debate tonight. Of course, on the program today, we have both the lone brothers, Sajad and Bilal, who have now uh, spoken and raised questions about the truth behind the assassination of their father, Abdul Ghani Lone. And we also have a number of other guests tonight. I want to start with you, uh, Bilal Lone. You said today that you failed uh, as a son. Uh, and I want to ask you this directly. Did you not speak all these years because you did not know the truth or because you knew the truth, but it seemed too risky uh, to come out and say it uh, because of the very obvious uh, environment of violence and threats uh, that, that existed perhaps, especially in earlier years in the valley? See, I don't want to go into details, but uh, yes, I, I, I some way I feel that I, I, I failed, I, sh I faltered as a son. I should have come up with this statement much earlier. But anyway, I think it's a time of mature, getting mature. And then, then I think I will be doing a service to my nation, which is at the time of evolution, at the time of political evolution for the state, uh, of, the, of, the, of the state. Uh, uh, what made you speak out now? Why, after so many years, are we seeing a number of people more ready? Is it, is it because you believe that the security situation in the valley has improved, that you're not so scared, in a sense, that you don't fear as much as you may have 10 years ago? It's not the, it is not the question of security situation. It's just a question of mature. I have, I have a candid confession on your television in the morning. I said that I failed. Maybe I was afraid. So what, there is no harm in just embracing the truth. Yes, I, I was afraid, I failed. I should have come up with the opportunate answer at the opportunate time, which I did not. Okay. And I think that, that let's not go, whether it's late or... No, but let's bury, uh, you know, these things in the past and let's go for a new Kashmir where these things are, where these types of things don't happen again. That's my only aim, to just talk about these things. Okay. And, 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 and let's hope that, that, that nothing of these things happen again. Okay, I think it's, it is important that people are coming out and saying to everybody on record that yes, I perhaps I failed, I should have spoken earlier. Sajad, if I can take the same question to you and to you specifically because I remember being in Srinagar on the day that your father was assassinated. I remember meeting you that night and that night uh, you actually blamed rival factions of the Hurriyat Conference as well as the ISI for the death of your father. The next morning, and you've written about this now, uh, your mother spoke to you and your mother told you you had to retract that statement. And you told me it was an emotional outburst and you said it could be an agency from India or Pakistan. Do you know better today and do you stick to that first statement that you made when you blamed the ISI and rival factions of the Hurriyat Conference? Look, I'll tell you, it's very difficult once an assassination takes place to pinpoint and uh, be specific as to who killed it. But uh, I can tell you with authority today that yes, uh, there were individuals within the agency in ISI. Whether they acted on their own behalf or on behalf of the institution, I don't know. But what has happened in Kashmir conflict is we never know when the individual is representing the institution and when he's committing an act on their on his own. But it's you believe that those two gunmen who emerged and, sh and shot Abdul Ghani Lone were associated with the ISI? They were Pakistanis. Uh, the information that we are getting now is that they were not Kashmiri nationals. The logistical support was provided by some of the Kashmiri nationals and uh, they were Pakistani uh, nationals who killed him. And uh, that the conspiracy was hatched in Pakistan is... is. Parka, I'll tell you something. We will what be... made you take back that statement the next morning and all these years? I told you it was my mother and not all these years. I want to make one distinction here. And it is very important, otherwise this whole focus of these brave remarks by Mr. Butt will be forgotten. Is that all along, I broke with tradition and I never said that India killed my father. I've never been on record. That was a tradition to, uh, to escape the stigma. I have never said, you can never, um, you know, say that I said something In like that. In the next day, your exact quote was, it could be some agency either from India or Pakistan. It's an ugly convergence of interest. That's all I know. When you retract it, that's what you ugly said. Ugly convergence of interest because I'll tell you, when the truth comes out, let the whole truth come out. If we are going to blame Pakistan, let us also blame 
when Moli Saab was killed, Moli Farooq Saab, the Home Minister of that time, Mufti Muhammad Sayyid, what was he doing, what was his intelligence doing, and the state government at the time of Lone Saab, when I know for sure, although I don't have the documentary proof, that the Central uh, Intelligence Agency of India did send a written record to the CID at that time that he's going to be attacked on this, on these three days, one of these three days, and they chose to sit back and uh, Although Professor Bhak did also say that even the senior Molvi, Mirwais Farooq, was also killed by men within your own ranks. Yeah. Look, Barkha, I'll tell you something. If we are going to speak the truth, I think it's the time for you people to also speak truth. Yes, Who's you people? You means people in the media, people who are international and happen to be journalists, that if I'm going to kill someone, right, there are apparatus within the state who can, uh, you know, allow that kill killing not to happen, who can stop that killing. Why is it that in case of some leaders, killings were allowed to happen? They were allowed to take place. I'm saying with full authority, I'll tell you, today with no fear, nothing at all, that yes, the gunmen were from Pakistan. Probably the conspiracy was hatched in Pakistan with institutional support, I don't know. But the institutions here also knew of the killing and they sat back. And since my father was not on their side, they thought his life is not precious enough to be saved. Let okay, him get killed.